Welcome everybody. This is Amber. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be video two about grief. I really, really need to speak about grief. Um, my first video was short and sweet. I was at Reed Park. A lot of distractions. But I was able to get out the first video which if you did not see it um, and you can go back and watch it it was more about signs that you haven't grieved properly I went over a list of items to look out for as far as signs that you have not grieved properly so I'm gonna go back to the beginning as I was sitting in Reed Park I came to the realization that a grief plays a big role in my life. And I started doing research. I'm sitting at the park. Within an hour, I swear, there had to have been so much information. Not only about grief, but the symptoms of grief. How you know you are struggling with grief. It's a difference between grief and mourning. It even talks about the effects on the brain and how to move on from it. So I'm just going to read to you some of the little notes that I talked, that I found, excuse me. I'm trying to get my rhythm going here. <laughs> Forgive me for a moment while I gather my bearings. Now, to just get right into it, again, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share to my channel if you wish. This video will be dark. It is intended to have you listen more than watch. So what is grief? Grief is the response to loss, particularly to the loss of someone or some living thing that has died, to which a bond or affection was formed. Grief is the response to loss, particularly to the loss of someone or some living thing that has died, to which a bond or affection was formed. Although conventionally focused on the emotional response to the loss, grief also has physical, cognitive, behavioral, social, cultural, spiritual, and philosophical dimensions. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? That was just the beginning of my research, guys. I've been suffering with grief for most of my life. I mean, all of my life. I mean, let's just keep it real, okay? We all have lost something. We've all suffered, you know, the loss of a loved one. Now, for me, in my first video, to me, grief is more than just losing someone that's passed on. You know, someone that you were close to, a friend, someone that's deceased, a lost animal. To me... It's also about losing your home, your job, your relationship, your family. I mean, it doesn't matter. Any type of loss, I category, categorize under grief. There is no other way to look at it. I mean, lately, I don't know about you guys, but between the full moon, the eclipse, and the other moons, <laughs> I just... Mercury retrograde, if any of you guys believe in that, okay? There's a lot of stuff going on lately inside our bodies, inside our minds. Most people that I've come in contact with lately, they all have something coming up. Whether it's childhood memories, whether it's a loss of a grandmother. In one day, I heard from three different people in one day about a loss of a grandmother. You know, I mean... How does that happen? You're going about your day, you're going here and you're going there. And, and what are the odds that three different people talk about the same thing? See what I mean? It's being brought up for us to look at and to say, hey, where do I sit with my own grief? Have I worked on it? Have I healed? Well, in my first video, I came to the realization on Sunday, I haven't healed anything. But that was me realizing that, hey, what is going on with me? Why am I crying? Why am I sad? Why am I depressed? All of these things. 
and then it, I had that aha moment. It's very good to do some research. Now some of these pages that I'll read from today, I, I have written down like links that I have found them at, but you can do your own research too. Look up grief. That's what I did. What is grief? That's where I started. You can read through it and maybe you'll find something in this message that you can take to heart and really start delving into yourself and say, what do I need to let go of? What am I grieving about that I don't realize that it's affecting me? So there's mourning and grieving and bereavement. Those are other words that relate to grief. The treatments, they have it down here under treatment. Can you believe it's treatment? Well, one thing you can do is talk to your pastor. Another one is a mental health or social worker. And also my favorite, which as I keep saying groups, you need to build your support group. If you don't have one and you can't find one, then you need to create one for yourself and for others around your circle. That is what I'm doing. So if you think about it as a whole, you support group, right? You're able to talk about things. You're able to relate. And for me, the most important thing about a group is to know that you're not alone. I don't know how many years I felt so alone until I met someone else who was grieving or who had a worse story than me. And I'm telling you now, that right there is like, wait a minute, what am I bitching about? My, my life is pretty simple compared to what that person went through. But it gives you empathy for the situation. You're able to look at yourself and look at that other person and say, if they've suffered this and they've gotten through it and they're still standing here today, what did they do that maybe I can learn from? Or what course did they take to get where they're at? You see what I'm saying? So you're able to go side by side and take a little here, take a little there, get information, resource help, support groups, is a plus for me. Definitely find a support group if you cannot deal with your grief. I highly recommend it. Please don't be afraid to leave messages on my YouTube channel here under the comments. Please, I'd like to hear your feedback. What are you grieving? How have you gotten through it? And what are things that you can help others? Leave a comment with a resource for someone else, you know, talk to people, make them aware. So enough with that on to the next topic, which is a big thing for me because, Hey, what are the symptoms of grief? Hello. How many of us out there have been grieving and we did not know it? What is grief? That's how I was. I've researched it. I've tried to get on the topic before, but I've never really looked into the symptoms. Now, these are just some of the things that I found on Wikipedia, okay, under grief. There are so many articles out there, so only take what resonates for you and leave the rest. I'm hoping that this video will help someone to not only wake up to their own suffering, but on help in ways of dealing with it in positive ways. One thing I've seen is a lot of people numb. They numb it away. I know full well about that because I've spent years doing that myself between alcoholism, a medication, marijuana, you know, distractions, um, going out all the time instead of sitting with myself. I've been avoiding it. How many of you guys out there can say that you've been avoiding the healing aspect of grief. It doesn't matter if it's a childhood pet that died or your father left and you missed them. You know, we're grieving those things. Did you know that you carry memories going back as far as the womb? Say your mom got pregnant, didn't want to keep you, but they were forced to keep you anyway. Did you know that you carry those memories and that feeling of not being wanted throughout the rest of your life without even knowing it. You know how I know that? 
because I took massage school. It's one of the first things they taught me. I didn't believe it either, but seriously, nobody's ticklish. Every ticklish spot is tension. Every ticklish spot or knot in your back is a deep rooted memory going back as far as the womb. You don't believe me? Look it up. I was like dumbfounded too, but we're speaking medically. Yes. Those knots in your back are deep seated memories. Try some acupuncture. I'm going for that next. I'll tell you, acupuncture is a really therapeutic technique. Massage, you know, support groups. Build, start your own massage little group. <laughs> Anyhow, to get back on it, symptoms of grief. Physically, you suffer headaches, feeling tired, achy muscles, and nausea. Um... I think I've had like every single one of those symptoms for many, many years. I had no idea that it was related to grief. Remember, our bodies are energy. We build it up inside of us physically. And if we don't have an outlet, it stays in there and it builds up and it causes physical illness. I know all too well about that. But it also causes emotionally, okay? It causes sadness, anger. Disbelief, despair, guilt, and loneliness. How many of you guys out there can relate to any of these emotional side effects? Well, then you're grieving. Mentally, you become forgetful. Lack of concentration, confusion, and poor memory. Here I am wondering why I have no energy. Why I'm confused. Why I have memory loss. Not only do I have medical complications going on in my body, but I also have things going on in my brain. Medically diagnosed. Prolactin levels are really high. I have degenerative disc, fibromyalgia, you know, migraine headaches. All of these things that I have suffered from. Even though I have these problems in my brain, physically and medically, I'm starting to think that the only way to heal them is to work on my grief. Because so far, I just keep getting diagnosed after diagnosed after diagnosed with one thing and another, ischemic disease, stroke. I've had my white matter turning gray and it's just like deteriorating, okay? But what if we changed our outlook on it and started to think the reason why I'm having all these problems is because I have an internal battle with my brain and my thought process based on the grief of the loss. No matter what it is, it's a loss. We are grieving. We get overwhelming amounts of stress hormones released during the grief, grief process. Now I've learned about stress hormones through school with my book. Um, what is it called? The Upside of Stress. If you guys want to learn about the positive side of stress, I highly recommend that book. Upside of Stress. Just look it up. Google it. It's a very good read. Okay. Definitely talks about the stress hormones, the positive and the negative sides of it. They actually, they effectively stun the muscles that they come in contact with, the stress hormones. Stress hormones act on the body in a similar way of a broken heart syndrome. But it's only temporary, guys. But read that, let me read that again. It says right here, stress hormones act on the body in a similar way to a broken heart syndrome. It's like dying of a broken heart. And we don't even know that we're dying. Why? Because we don't know we're grieving. I don't know about you guys, but I've spent too many years trying to numb or avoid it. And it just recently came slammed down on me that this is what it is. This is my problem. And now I'm wanting to learn how to get out of it. Now, remember, it's only temporary. 
If you are to the point where you're so stressed out, please do me a favor, stop what you're doing and make that call. Call a friend, call a family member, call the church. I don't care, like I did once. I got nervous, I was having a bad day, I needed some advice, and I was scared. And what did I do? I walked into the nearest church that I found, and I asked to speak with the pastor. I'd never been in the church before, but something told me, you need to go to the pastor. And I did. So, it's only temporary. What is grief? Grief versus mourning. There's difference, okay? Grief is what we think and feel. It's our fear, loneliness. It causes panic and pain. It causes yearning, anxiety, and emptiness. Sound familiar? Mourning, on the other hand, when you're mourning something, okay, is an outward expression of our grief, okay? It's an outward expression. In other words, it's how we behave on it. If something comes up to us, it's how we react, you know? It's, it's an outward expression. Now, what really is going to kick the bucket for you guys is the effects on the brain, I was just talking about the effects on the brain and how medically I've been told that I have problems, right? But yet there's no treatment. There's, oh, you're just fine and there's nothing we can do right now, right? Well, it makes me wonder, is this all in my head? Can I fix it? Well, there are effects on the brain, guys. It causes memory problems, concentration problems, cognitive problems, and a focused on feelings and symptoms, okay? That's the effect. It affects the memory. It affects concentration, cognition, okay? It affects everything in your brain. Why? Because did you know that 90, let's see, 92% of our worry and our thoughts are all either has happened or hasn't happened or is going to happen. Did you know that only 8% of our brain is seriously worried? 8%. 8% of our brain. The rest of it is bullshit. Excuse my language, but I had to say it. The rest of it needs to go. If you are in your head, please... I'm going to give you some tips here on how to move on. First, you got to write your feelings down. Like I tell my son all the time, he's one of the ones I always bring up because he's the most shy of between my daughter, Sally and Jake, you know, Jake is like, Oh, well, I'm a man. And, um, you know, and I'm like, but nobody needs to know. Nobody has to know that you're sitting there writing down your feelings. No one needs to see it. You can say it to yourself in your brain, but eventually you're going to have to sit down and write it out. I'll tell you what, I've been doing a lot more writing lately and it feels good to write. My dad taught me, write down everything you can until your hand falls off if you're that mad. And then I want you to seal it up and put it in an envelope, put it out of sight for two weeks and then go back and read it. And I said, well, why would I do that? He goes, so you can laugh at your ass because of how crazy it sounds. But it's true. I was only in my early 20s when my dad taught me that, you know, but it still sticks with me. And I've taught it in groups. I have helped people by having them write down whatever they were feeling and thinking. And I told them, if you anything, write down how, how you see your future. Seal it up. Try it. Okay. Promise me. Do something for yourself. Sit down and write down what you don't like, what you see, what you want to see in your healing and where you want to see yourself go from here. Even give yourself six months, you know, just six months. Give yourself a six month goal and say, this is what I want. Seal it in an envelope and forget about it. Go back to it in two weeks and let me know how it works. I'll tell you, I've seen magic happen with that. So second of all is talk about it. I have been drawn to talk 
and communicate more and more about this kind of stuff, such as grief and radical acceptance and forgiveness. And how about love? Because it is the only way I know to take care of me mentally is to talk about it. I do a lot of talking. For any of you guys that know me out there, I do a lot of talking. Too much sometimes. I hate myself for it sometimes. I'm very hard on myself when I get home. Why did I do that? Why couldn't I shut up? You know, it's like, just accept it. That's the next thing. Accept your feelings. Write it down, talk about it, and accept it. Okay? I don't know how many times I've said it, but acceptance is the only thing that you need to do. If you accept your feelings... Even in the moment that you're feeling it, that is the first step to change, to changing that thought, to changing what you're going to do about it or your reaction to it. That is what I learned sitting on Sunday underneath the tree reading about this was, wait a minute, this whole time I've been grieving, this whole time all my symptoms and everything the doctors have been telling me all this was a lie. But what I learned was, hey, I can fix it. I can write it down. I can talk about it. I accept my feelings. Now, next says, take care of yourself and your family. In other words, pay it forward. Find something else that you can do to help someone else. That right there will make you feel better. I guarantee it. Try it. Reach out and help others with their loss. Take your story, your wisdom, your guidance. Don't force it on anyone, but just know that you can reach out and help others with their loss too. It doesn't have to be just a death, okay? It can be a loss of a job, okay? Loss of a marriage or a relationship. It can be a loss of a family, and I'll tell you what, I know all too well about that, okay? I've lost most of my family. I've lost cats. I've lost my home. I've, you know, I've been through the ringer. But I have taken everything that I have endured over the last even six years since I started helping the good people. And I have found ways to use what I have to help others. I've used my own story and you know, how I got through it to help others. There really isn't any other way to say it, but when you help someone else in the simplest ways, it gives such gratitude to yourself and your well-being that it, it's like a euphoria, a euphoria, I guess in a way you can say it's euphoria. It gives you that feeling, that high, you know, like, woo I did it. Okay, so remember that. No matter what, it could be the smallest little thing. Reach out and help others with your loss, with their loss. Your loss, their loss. I think you get the point. On to the next topic. Loss is a natural part of life. We can um, be overcome by shock and confusion, leading to prolonged periods of sadness and depression. Oh my goodness, severe grief, complicated grief causes serious sadness and depression. Okay, I can tell you now, that was my wake up call on Sunday it was like, dang man, no wonder why I'm sad, no wonder why I've been crying. Hmm. Grief is not the same as depressive order though, okay, do not get that that uh, mixed up in the least, okay? It's not an illness to be treated. Grief is not an illness. The sadness and depression that come from grief is not the same as depression disorder. It is not an illness to be treated, okay? That you can check out at willowhouse.org. That's what I'm reading on here. It is a healthy response to a painful reality. That's what it is. They are forever altered and will never be the same after. Have you, any of you guys had any experience where you had a traumatic experience in your home 
you come home later after the event happens and your whole world just seems different. Your house doesn't feel the same anymore. Your friends don't feel the same anymore. Even sleeping in your bed doesn't even feel normal anymore because of that event. Well, that's kind of what it, it is. They will all, Grief can alter you for the rest of your life if you let it. Now the good question is, is why do we need to grieve? Okay, it frees up energy. Okay, we're just talking about energy through the body. By grieving and, and finding the need to let go and heal from it, it frees up the energy to give you time to reinvest the energy elsewhere. Reinvesting can be difficult. A part of us remains in the past. Grieving is not forgetting, okay? Even though it's in the past, okay, it has to remain in the past, but we have to pull it forward to feel it, allow it, and let it go. Grief can change a person's psychology and personality forever. In other words, some people will never heal from it. Some people may never wake up to it. They may never, may never link it like I did on Sunday, and I'm hoping that you do now to link it to some of the illnesses that we have, you know? It literally can change a person's psychology and personality forever. Yes, forever. Sometimes it can change immediately after the suffering, okay? It's an automatic response. Depression, though, it can be the longest of the stages of grief. So, say you're depressed, you know, you don't know why. You've been in it for a long time, like myself. Well, it can last the longest. It's, it's one of the biggest weights on our back when it comes to grief because we don't know how to release it. We don't know how to talk about it. For me, it's taken me many years to communicate on how to deal with stuff. You know, it's like I, I have an automatic response. I get upset and I react. If I don't care if it's, you know, someone sitting in a bar or, you know, at a park or something and I see them and I have a problem with them. It's like automatic reaction, you know, or someone says something um, that triggers a memory from childhood. You know, it's automatic. Sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. I had to literally teach my kids how to calm me down gently by saying, mommy, you're yelling, mommy, you're cussing. And you know what? That helped. It did. So if you got a support network around you right now, you got supportive family and friends, please allow them the opportunity to calmly help you. Okay. For me, if someone says, shut the fuck up, I'm going to be like, screw you. You know what I mean? Automatic. So if you have a support group, I highly recommend you talking to them about it and asking them to remind you when you get worked up or when you get in a depressive state to check on you. You know, things like that. It really does help. One of the other things is it may go unnoticed for several weeks or months after the loss of a loved one or a traumatic experience. Just remember that it is temporary, but it can last for a very long time until we accept it. Okay? I mean, they're just... <sighs> Grief that is... Um, Grief that is withheld and not recognized can have a negative impact on us emotionally as well as physically. If we can consciously delay grieving and withholding emotions, it can cause headaches, difficulty sleeping, ailments and stomach problems. Unresolved grief is like a driving a car with the handbrake on. That right there made me laugh. Unresolved grief is like driving a car with the handbrake on. Think about it. <laughs> How many of you guys have the handbrake on? Me. Me, 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 me. Well, I'm going to close out this. I found on chatbooks.com, it's a blog. I did find um, some quotes about grief that are in the Bible. Okay. I'm going to read for you three quotes that I found related to grief okay and about how you are safe you are okay you are okay there's nothing wrong with you 
For those of you that do hear my story and do relate to any of this, please hit the like button. That just tells me that you've watched the video all the way through and uh, that you do relate in some way, whether you want to talk about it or not. The fact that you hit the like button tells me that you understand what I'm saying and that, you know, that you're not going to give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up on yourselves. Please don't. Grieve the loss. Talk with someone. Write it down. Get out of your head by, you know, taking long walks. You know, go swim. Like me, I go roller skating. I go to the park. You know, I write. I read. I go listen to my friends play music. That in itself helps me. And when I am feeling really, really down, the upside distress is that it makes you reach out to people. It makes you get up and go out. It makes you go seek out other people. That is the upside of stress. So the next time you say, I'm stressed, are you really stressed or are you really yearning for change? So I'm going to close it out with Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Psalms 73, 26. My flesh and my heart falleth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Remember that. They shall be comforted. For those of you that did not see the first video, I highly recommend going back and watching it. But I will leave you with the seven signs that you have not grieved properly in case you didn't watch it. Number one, you don't want to talk about it or acknowledge the loss. Number two, now remember, these are signs you haven't grieved properly. Okay? Number two, you isolate and detach from friends and family. We got to stop doing that. I'm guilty of that myself. Number three, overactivity, working too much, too much time on hobbies to distract. So if you catch yourself distracting and distracting and always on the go and trying to push it away, stop what you're doing, acknowledge it, okay? It's okay to work. It's okay to do all this other stuff and hobbies. But you got to take time for self-love and self-care. Okay? Don't forget about yourself. We don't always have to distract ourselves. I'm learning that the hard way. Number four. You indulge in bad habits. Over and under eating. Okay? Drinking too much alcohol and risky behavior. Wow. <laughs> talk about some bad habits <laughs> under eating overeating I'm guilty of all of it so you know we all have a history you know nobody's perfect but hey that tells me right there yeah I need to deal with my grief me my last habit is cigarettes so <laughs> number five you sleep more than usual Number six, you are overreacting to a relative small event. That's what I was talking about. It's an outward expression. It's a trigger. It's a response, a natural response to the stress, to the depression, to the grief. You see what I'm saying? We got to stop overreacting. Take a meditation course. Go do yoga. You know, Get out of your head. Go do some acupuncture. Like I said, reflexology. I've been wanting to get my feet messed with because I'll tell you what, that in itself is just so soothing to the spirit. Acupuncture, reflexology. Remember that, okay? Number seven, you avoid getting close to people and starting new relationships for fear of being hurt. Does that sound familiar to you? Feelings of being out of control, losing your voice due to burying your pain. And again, talk about it. The more you talk about it, the better you're going to feel. That's all I can say. 
I so appreciate each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, if it hadn't have been for all the support and all my friends that I do have, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about this right now. I gotta say, I'm very happy to have so much love and support. <sighs> sometimes I don't give myself credit and sometimes I'm too hard on myself and I think that I'm better off just hibernating and hiding away when I know that it's a slow death. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of living in grief. I'm ready to face my past, my trauma, the losses and everything head on. In other words, not today, Satan, right? That's all you got to do. Remind yourself, not today. Acknowledge it. I love you guys. Stay tuned. I'm Amber Johnson with Helping the Good People here in Tucson, Arizona. Like, subscribe, and share.